Let's brew a Kolsch on my electric Herms Garage Brewery. Hello everyone and welcome back to Just Home Brew. This video is part of a collaboration series I have with a commercial brewer based out of Northern Virginia. And he's also a fellow brew tuber, the Beer Junkies. I'm going to be brewing a Kolsch recipe he recently uploaded to his channel. And I'm going to see how close I can get my beer to the beer he serves in his brewery. I'll post a link to his YouTube channel in the description and also list out the recipe. Make sure to check his channel out. He does a great job of giving a glimpse of what it's like to brew in a commercial brewery. He also focuses on recipe development. So in this brew day, I'm gonna go over the grain bill, the water profile, the hops addition, and then I'm gonna walk you through how I brew on my electric home brewery. Before we get started, I'll give you a really quick overview of my home brewery. It's a three vessel Herm setup, starting with the boil kettle. The boil kettle's 15 gallons and it's runoff of a 220 volt electrical element. I have a 15 gallon mash ton and I have a seven and a half gallon hot liquor tank. My electric kettles are run off of two electric control panels. One is a 220 volt electric control panel that controls my boil kettle. And I have a 120 volt control panel that controls my hot liquor tank. So let's brew that Kolsch. I have my boil kettle filled up with 13 gallons of RO water. And I also have my hot liquor tank filled up with seven gallons of RO water. I'm gonna start heating this water up to mash temperature and then go start crushing the grains. You can see the water in the boil kettle is currently at 42 degrees. When I turn this on, I can see how many volts are going to my electrical element and how many amps are actually being pushed through the element as well. I currently have the Arbor PID set to 159 degrees. Let's go ahead and bring it up to 160 for now. And at the same time, I'm gonna turn on my hot liquor tank to bring this water up to a mash temperature. So this is controlled by a 120 watt element. It works the same way. I have a master on off switch on the side. You can see the PID is telling me the water is currently set at 44 degrees, not set, but that's what the temperature of the water is in my hot liquor tank. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on. It's the same layout as my 220 volt system. On the left, I can control an outlet for a pump or, or really anything. And my right side controls the power going to the electrical element. I see I'm at 109 degrees for my boil kettle. That's bringing 13 gallons up to a mash temperature. And my hot liquor tank is up to 104. So maybe five or 10 more minutes and I'll be ready to mash in. The grain bill for this coal shall be 13 pounds and 6.4 ounces of Pilsner German two row, one pound, eight ounces of Vienna malt, one pound of Munich malt, one pound of Carapils, and eight ounces of rice hulls. The hops additions will include one ounce of Northern Brewer at 60 minutes, a half an ounce of Saz at 30 minutes, and one ounce of Saz at five minutes. I have all my salts ready to go to create my water profile. I haven't created a water profile yet. I typically use just filtered water, but for this collaboration, I'm excited to really dip my toes into experimenting of how different water profiles affects the beer. And I'm hoping when we sit down with the beer junkies, when we wrap up this series, we can go into a little bit more detail and he can help me think about how I can adjust the water profile to achieve what I'm trying to achieve when brewing beer. A new addition to my brewery is this Buckeye reverse osmosis filter. I installed it just for this brew day. I'll go into a little bit more detail in a future video, but I just wanna show you how I started my water profile by using a reverse osmosis filter. Based off the recipe, we're gonna create a water profile for the mash water and also the sparge water. We're gonna start by adding 1.7 grams of gypsum, 2.3 grams of calcium chloride, 1.3 grams of Epsom salt, and 0.3 grams of canning salt. And for the sparge water for my hot liquor tank, we're gonna add 2.7 grams of gypsum, 3.5 grams of calcium chloride, two grams of Epsom salt, and 0.5 grams of canning salt. I added the salts in the boil kettle. I'm not sure if you're supposed to add it to the mash tun or the boil kettle. Next time I'm gonna try the mash tun. I noticed when I was finished transferring all the water, there were some salts left over in the boil kettle. I had to lift the boil kettle up and dump the remaining water into the mash tun. Not a problem, but try that next time. So let's go ahead and start mashing in. Okay. 
I just finished mashing in, so I'm going to start recirculating my mash through the heat exchanger in the hot liquor tank. I'm going to set my control panel to 151 degrees. I'm going to recirculate for 60 minutes at this temperature. At the end of 60 minutes, I'm gonna raise it to 170 degrees and then transfer the mash into the boil kettle. When I'm heating the water up for mash, I have the temperature probe measuring the temperature of the kettle. When I'm ready to recirculate, I move the temperature probe from the kettle to a T that's connected to the heat exchanger. Now the control panel is set at 151 degrees. So when I start to recirculate my mash from my mash tun through my pump, it'll go through this heat exchanger inside my hot liquor tank. The water is going to be set at 151 degrees. When the water goes into the hot liquor tank, it'll go through the heat exchanger. It'll come out the top. It'll measure the temperature of the mash. And if it's below 151 degrees, the temperature controller will heat up the coil inside. You can see it at the bottom of the hot liquor tank. It'll heat up that coil to raise the temperature. Or if it's too warm, it'll turn the heater off and then the mash will run back into the mash tun and recirculate through the grain. I use this kitchen strainer to sprinkle the return mash into the mash tun. When the return mash water goes into the mash tun, it filters through the top of this colander. So we'll start the timer at 60 minutes now. And at 60 minutes, we'll raise the temperature to 170 degrees and then start our boil. We're about 20 minutes in and I'm holding steady at 151 degrees. I'm continuing to recirculate through my mash tun, through the pump, back through the hot liquor tank, and back in the mash tun again. And when I start the batch barge, I'll add the salts to the hot liquor tank, and then we will transfer it to the boil kettle for the boil. So while I'm waiting for my mash to finish up, I'm going to get my two seven and a half gallon bucket fermenters ready for when I'm done with the boil. I'm going to add a heating blanket to each one. It's still a little cold in Pennsylvania. And I'm also going to set up the glycol system for the bucket fermenters when I need to cool the buckets down. I'm done mashing. So I'm going to transfer the wort into my boil kettle. Then I'm going to raise the temperature of my hot liquor tank to 170 degrees. Then I'll start to batch sparge. Once I'm done batch sparging, I'm going to transfer the, the wort into the boil kettle and then start the boil. That'll be easier. That's really hot. I'm done with batch sparging and now I'm going to transfer the wort into my boil kettle and then I'll start the boil. We're transferring it through the pump and into the boil kettle. I've turned up the temperature on my control panel to 100%. We're going to go ahead and start bringing this up to a boil. For ventilation, I use, I believe it's called a steam slayer. When the boil kettle starts to boil, the steam will go through this elbow at the top of the lid. I have cold water running through the top of the condenser. The steam is then converted back to water. And then the water is run out the side of my garage through a simple drain pipe. Once the boil kettle comes up to a boil, I put the lid on for the steam condenser and then I can reduce the power to around 40 or 50%. Got Northern Brewer for the 60 minute hop. We are boiling at around 50% power. So we'll just keep this going for 30 minutes and then we'll add our next hop addition. So I thought I'd give you a shot of my steam slayer working in action. My boil kettle has been boiling for about a half an hour and there's hardly any steam in my garage. I have it drained into a bucket. There's a little steam coming out of the water, but it's very minor. While we're finishing up the boil, I went ahead and plumbed the kettle to run through the counterflow chiller. I took the valve port off the kettle and I ran it to my pump. The pump will then pump it through my counterflow chiller, have it plumbed at the top. So the hot wort will start at the top and then be discharged to the bottom back into my boil kettle. I then we'll disconnect the condenser and plug in a water hose for my counterflow chiller. So I'll plug this into the faucet 
and then I'll run cold water counter to or counter flow the hot wort. So this counter flow chiller should cool my 10 gallons of wort down in about 10 minutes. I'm just about to add my last hop addition. I'll let it boil for five more minutes and then we'll run it through the counter flow chiller. Now the boil's over, I have the counter flow working. I have the boil kettle hooked up to the pump, which is running hot wort through the counter flow chiller back into the boil kettle. We are currently at 177 degrees. This should be cooled down in about 10 minutes to about 70 degrees. It's been about 10 or 15 minutes. And as you can see, I'm just about at pitchy temperature. So as soon as that hits 70 degrees, I'm going to start transferring the wort into my two fermentation buckets. If you never used a Whirlpool port before, this is what it looks like after you run your wort through this port. It creates a nice cone in the middle. I'm going to let the yeast sit out for just a little bit to bring up the room temperature, but then I'll pitch the yeast and then we'll let this ferment. For this fermentation, we're going to do a little bit of an experiment. We're going to be fermenting with the White Labs German Ale Kolsch yeast, WLP029. We're going to ferment this, I guess, for a week or two at 68 or 69 degrees. And for the second fermenter, we're going to try something a little different. We're going to be fermenting with the Imperial yeast, Kvyking A44. I've never used this yeast before, but I, from what I heard, it's great and it ferments fast. And we're going to be fermenting at 75 degrees. So that's a wrap on this Kolsch Brew Day. I hope you enjoyed it. I hit all my numbers. I hit my starting gravity of 1.045. I think it's going to be a great beer. The only part of the day I was a little uncomfortable with was creating the water profile. This was the first time I worked with the reverse osmosis water and adding salts to create the profile. But I feel confident after following the Beer Junkie's instructions, this is going to be a great beer. Make sure to look out for an upcoming video. The Beer Junkie's going to send me beer from his brewery. I'm going to send him beer from this brew day, and we're going to compare the two. I'm really interested to see how close I can come to the beer he serves at his brewery. If you haven't already, maybe check out this video. Or this one. See you next time. Cheers.